Hello and welcome to this Cost Tip of the Day. Oh, hi, Mark. Uh, so what we're doing today, other than making jokes in intros, hopefully Haas doesn't get upset about that clip being used there, but uh, I guess we'll find out. Uh, basically, we're going to expand on the last Haas Tip of the Day video where they talked briefly about compensating for feed rates inside of MashCam or your cam software. Obviously, we're going to look at MashCam. Uh, but yeah, we're going to look at what you can do inside of MashCam to adjust your feed rate when your end mill is very close in size to the feature you're trying to machine. So up here on screen, we'll try and mimic what they're talking about specifically in the video. And they're talking about machining a 550 hole with a half inch end mill. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, there's obviously lots of different tool paths we can pick from. And I'm going to be choosing the contour tool path because it's got something inside of it now that uh, makes this a little easier uh, than before. So basically, let's just set this up with our half inch end mill. We'll set our feed rate similar to what they had in the video. I'm not going to worry about uh, RPMs because that wasn't really the point of this video. The, the point was the feed rate or the resulting feed rate on the machine. Uh, so let's just uh, verify a few settings here. A 2D contour, no stock left. Uh, Lead-ins and lead-outs. We'll have to do some, some small finessing here. And linking parameters. It doesn't really matter how deep we're cutting here. We'll just go ahead and program this at the default settings. So we're cutting a 550 hole with a 0.5 end mill. And if we hop into a back plot, uh, our feed rates will be accurate. The feed rates we see here will be the feed rates we do see on the machine for the post I'm running. And you'll see when I get into the actual cut, uh, my feed rate is coming out at 30 inches per minute. So I'm gonna cut this hole at 30 inches per minute, which if you watch the video, that's not what we want to happen. So how do we go about fixing this in MashCam? They did allude to this briefly in the video. Uh, and basically in the contour toolpath anyways, inside of the arc filter tolerance page, we have a new setting. I think I believe it was 2018 the setting came out in. Uh, override arc feed rates. So this is the guy you want to turn on if in fact you want the result they talked about in that video. So we, here we are looking at ID, so we are doing an internal arc. And here we can set the maximum decrease we want to allow for this operation. The formulas they talked about in the video will all be done in the background within this switch right here. We just have to tell it basically uh, how low can you go before we want to limit it. How low can you go? Can you go down low? All the way to the flow? Uh, so theoretically, it could go down to 0 0.001 uh, feed rate, whatever your minimum feed rate is set for your operation in your machine. Uh, but you could override that and say, I don't want you to ever go any slower than 5 inches per minute. If that was the case, you could key in 5 inches per minute in here, and it, even though it calculated that it wanted to go slower, it would cap it at that speed. Uh, but basically, if you want this thing to just basically do the math and get the math right, you're going to want to put in a high value into this percentage key over here. So I'm going to put in 99%, uh, which given our 30 inch per minute initial feed rates uh, will allow this to go as slow as 0.3 inches per minute if the need comes up. It won't. We know what number we're looking for already since we've watched that video. Um, but uh, if you didn't know and you had a tool that was very close in size to the diameter of the tool, you might want to give it some more room. Okay, so let's go with that. Let's hit OK. Let's rebuild this toolpath and let's backplot this again and see if we made any change to our feed rate. Uh, I'm going to have to switch over to interpolate. Nice small step here so I can see all the moves. So there we're into the arc and there's our feed rate of 2.7273 inches per minute as it's going around. Uh, that is similar or that is the exact same number they came up with in the formula in the videos. Uh, you'll notice here that we are getting a, a further reduction down to 2.22 inches per minute. Uh, that's happening on the lead in arc and the lead out arc. So not only are we getting a compensated feed rate on the actual cuts, we're getting a compensated feed rate on the lead in move as well, which might not be as a big of a deal, but, uh, but hey, it's been done for us. So that's the nice thing about 2D Contour. Uh, they talked a lot about in the video about thread milling. 
Um, not only thread milling, but many of the other toolpaths don't have that option available. We don't have the checkbox to uh, play down or play up the feed rate given the geometry that we're picking. So what can we do with features like that? So with features like this, we're going to have to do a little bit more work. So let's hop into a thread mill. We'll thread mill the same 550 diameter hole. And we're going to be using a, a thread mill that has still got that same half inch uh, major diameter on it. This might not be a real thread mill, but to keep numbers similar, I'm using similar sized tools and holes. Uh, so initial feed rate, we'll set this at 30 inches per minute. Plunge rate and RPMs don't really matter. Uh, we are doing basically one cut around this guy. And we don't have that arc filtering page in our thread mill like we did in 2D Contour. So without that, obviously, I, I can't now turn that on. Uh, so all I can do is accept this operation uh, as is. Let's skew this sideways so we can see it a little bit better. And we'll play into our back plot and we'll see the feed rates that this toolpath is going to generate. So here we are uh, doing the helix now and there is that 30 inches per minute that we told it to feed at. So as mentioned, that's going to be a problem. This thing is going to feed much faster than it should or much faster than we intend. So how can we fix this? So other options in MASHCAM, if you're not using the 2D contour and you don't have that switch available in the arc filtering, what we can do is we can jump into high feed or the other alternative is hopping into the tool settings and turning on the adjust feed on arc move. Both of these settings will have different results and depending on what you're after, they may or may not work for you. So this adjust feed on arc move, if we were to turn it on, basically what's going to happen, reading from the description in the help file, adjust the current linear feed rate to fit arc geometry. The feed rate change occurs at the start of the arc, and the adjusted feed rate cannot fall below the minimum feed rate uh, specified. So let's checkbox this guy, go down to a minimum of 0 0.5, hit OK. So when we do this, you have to rebuild your operation. So let's rebuild that thread mill. And the other thing to keep in mind is, is that setting is, is global. It's uh, any new toolpath we make now will have that switch turned on for it. So if you don't like what it does for all of your operations, you might not want to be using that. So let's have a look at our feed rates here, see if we can see any uh, differences in this thread mill. You can see we're basically bottoming out at our specified lowest feed rate right off the bat. So that's not the feed rate we should be getting. Uh, we should be getting that same 2.7 uh, etc inches per minute. Uh, so that was just taking our lowest feed rate and, and spitting it out. So that's good or bad. Uh, probably, probably bad. So let's go back in and we will turn that setting back off. Rebuild our toolpath to get it basically back to, to where it was. And option number two, and again, this, this option here, this high feed option, I know we're trying to slow the feed rate down, so high feed seems a little counterintuitive, uh, but this will kind of get us closer to what we're after as well. This one can be used for specific tool paths within your program, so you don't have to apply it globally. You can pick two or three tool paths and apply this only to those. So with this one, uh, I'm going to leave it th this at finishing only since I'm only really doing uh, one cut here. So basically what will happen when you're set to finishing only, it will take information that you've got set in the machine dynamics page within the control definition and use those for guidance into getting appropriate speeds and feeds, or sorry, to get appropriate feed rates for the operation. So I'll set this to finishing only. There's no toggles or operations here for me to, to pick on. Uh, same with stock setup. If I'm set to finishing only, I've got no settings. Again, it's reading from that machine dynamics page. So I'll click OK. Basically hit play. It plays through and finds some changes. Uh, notice it says here the machining time has been reduced from one second to up to uh, 17 seconds. Um, so I think reduced is probably the wrong word here, but uh, the point is made. We're at negative 1900%. So we'll click yes, I want to save it, green check to complete that. Notice the operation is now locked. So since we've done some external finessing to this operation, uh, MASHCAM goes ahead and locks it for us. 
uh, just to tell us that, you know, if you do want to rebuild it, you'll have to redo that external finessing again. So let's play through this in backplot and have a look at the resulting feed rate changes. And notice basically we're getting now uh, 18 uh, inches per minute is our reduced feed rate. So nowhere close to that 2.7 we were expecting, uh, but definitely less than the 30 inches per minute we had input. So with some changes on the machine dynamics page, you could you know fandangle this number down to what it's supposed to be, uh, but you may find that that then will play differently with other operations. Uh, so all of this is really a, a balancing act between what works good on operation A versus what will work good on operation B given different parameters. So what I would suggest you do if you're running the treadmill um, and you don't want to run full compensation is do a dummy toolpath with the contour with similar sized holes and maximum sized diameter tools. Uh, get the compensated feed rate from that and then in your thread mill, uh, what I would do is I would just uh, hard code in that uh, feed rate and not worry about any external switches to handle that uh, feed rate adjustment. Uh, other alternatives that you have for MashCam, there are some post modifications you can do to, to try and handle this, this arc reduction feed rate. What a lot of developers will do is give an operation a switch in a miscellaneous value. You click that switch, it will apply that uh, feed rate reduction based on the arc only for that operation. So again, you're not applying it globally like that uh, tool settings page was doing. So with that, I think we'll wrap this video up. We've gone into a few options into controlling your feed rate inside of these features that are close in size to the tool that you're using uh, within MasterCam. Uh, there's obviously still more things you can do on your controller. Uh, that's, I think, a whole other video in itself. So I think we'll skip over that for, for this uh, blog post anyways. Uh, but always keep in mind. Keep in mind. If you have any problems, talk to me and I will help you. Awesome. Thanks, Johnny. Let's go eat, huh? Come on, let's go. <laughs> let's right go. On, I'm starving. <laughs> <It's working. laughs>